you so much, worship team. I greet you all in the name of Jesus. Amen. Uh, for those who don't know me, my name is Mukete. So the name means a feast or a celebration. So you can imagine when I have to attend funerals, I can't be myself. Yeah, yeah you know. So I'm going to be your host for this morning. And I want to take this moment and welcome everyone and the new visitors. Do we have new visitors? We should have a visitor. I'm expecting someone who wants to join the church. Okay, maybe they're not yet here. All right, welcome everyone. Uh, you are at the right place at the right time. Because we are starting an exciting, exciting series and Ian is here today to bless us with the word. So you are at the right place. You are going to leave this place blessed. So the theme of the series is waiting on the Holy Spirit. And Ian is going to talk about waiting in obedience. So it's going to be fantastic service. Our kids ministry, the cell groups and youth will continue today. Kids ministry in the Yellow Hall. Thank you. And tithe and offerings, you are welcome to use the bank details. Please take note of the reference. Make sure that you use the correct reference. You know what I used to do when I've just arrived here? I used to put my name. I'm thinking, nah, they need to know who I am. Forget the reference. But I'm thinking if it goes to the main church, they don't know who Mukit is. So please make sure you use the correct reference. And contributions to the SOS funds are welcome for our families in need. There is also a different code for that. This is very important. Now we'll move to tithe and offering. We have the boxes here, and you can also do EFT if you can. Let's close our eyes, and I'll pray for tithe and offering. Father God, in the mighty name of Jesus, this wonderful morning we come before you with offerings in our bank accounts, in our hands. Heavenly Father, bless those who are giving this wonderful morning. Increase from where they have taken. The Bible says you are delighted by a cheerful giver, Heavenly Father. May, they, may you soften their hearts to give more and beyond in the church. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, amen. Good morning, everybody. Please stand, and then we're going to worship together. I invite you to, to let go of everything that holds on to you and um, just give it to God this morning and rejoice because he, he loves you and his grace is unending.
keep finding, you keep giving, keep providing.
Children has the possibility to act out joy. When I look at my little boy, who is almost turning five now, when he's joyous about something that, um, that is exciting him or maybe getting a present, there's nothing that is hindering their joy. And it's something that reminds me today that this joy that's in the house of the Lord is what we need desperately in a world that is depressed, in a world that is depleted of energy. So speaking of kids, many of you have seen the experiment on television where they've put down, uh, or they, they took a child, put her in a room and with a small plate in front of her with a marshmallow on this plate. And then she gets told that if she, um, they're going away now, and if she does not eat that marshmallow for this time that the adults are, the adults are gone, then when they come back, she will get a whole packet of marshmallows. So um, many of you have seen this video but then this little girl is sitting there, the, the adult went out, and this marshmallow is looking at her on this plate. And she's like, whoa, <laughs> this is a beautiful marshmallow. <laughs> you can experience the joy in a, on her face, you know, wow. And then the adults do not come back, and she's like, whoa, this marshmallow is talking to me. This marshmallow is telling me, eat me, eat me. And then after a few minutes, she's looking around to see if she can see anybody. And then she takes this marshmallow, she puts it back, looks around again, takes it again, and then she eats it. And then when her mother or the adult comes back, what do you think happens? I'm sorry, but you ate the marshmallow, so you, you did not obey, you were not obedient, so now this packet full of marshmallows, I cannot give it to you. What, do you can you experience the sadness on that little girl's face? You know, knowing that her, her temptation was so big for this one marshmallow that she lost out on a whole packet of marshmallows. So, why do we need to wait? We need to wait because in the wait, there is a promise at the end. And in our faith, it is the same. We live in a world where everything is instant. So whenever we are given a plate with something of temptation in front of us, knowing that the, we have the promise of Christ that saved us, his salvation is within us through the Holy Spirit. Knowing that, 
we still many times take the marshmallow of life and shove it in our face. And losing out on the best promise there is. So, there are many waiting themes that I can share with you today. So, we've got a joyous waiting where one is expecting, a lady is expecting, and she um, goes into labor, and it's a bit of uncertainty, but there, there is an expectation waiting for the dad, the family, the doctors, everyone, for this bundle of joy to arrive. Or if you wait before an exam or a big test, you're filled with anxiety or fear as you wait for them to hand out those papers. It can be that you are waiting at a table at a restaurant. So waiting can also be serving other people. And waiting, for most of us, we tend to, to portray it regarding home affairs, the queues at the home affairs. <laughs> Boy, they make you angry in those queues. But what do we do when we are waiting? When we wait in obedience, there is an expectancy of a promise, of something worthwhile. I'm reminded of Matthew 4, where the Spirit leads Jesus into the, the desert, where the devil goes to, to tempt Jesus. And he had to wait for 40 days. For 40 days without food, without water, till he became hungry and thirsty. And only then did Satan come to tempt Jesus. So he also waited, but he remained true and obedient through the word of God. There were moments that people waited for Jesus. If you think about Lazarus, his friend that died, Lazarus' sisters called for Jesus, and then he didn't pitch. So Lazarus died, and only four days later, Jesus came into the town. And they went to him and said, but you're, you're too late. He's already dead. He's smelling already. But for Jesus, even when he is late in our terms, he's still in time for saving, in time for the promise that he brings. There were times that Jesus waited on the people. That Sermon on the Mount, he took two fishes and five loaves of bread and he fed 5,000 people, more than 5,000 people. That is the promise that he gives us. For a moment there, I want you to think about places and times that you had to wait for something. What was your experience? If you're thinking about home affairs now, um, be honest with yourself. <laughs> I pity the people working there because people can be so nasty to them. But did you want to give up while you waited? Was there a time while you waited where you said, I'm not going through with this? Or I'm not going to take it anymore. It's finished. I'm not going to even, even bother anymore. Did you want to give up? Walk out? Or did you persevere or endure for the promise that awaits you? Jesus had to wait, bearing his cross. He told his disciples to wait when he went to pray, and they fell asleep. And at the right moment, Jesus fulfilled the promise, not leaving us as orphans, as he said, but by sending his Holy Spirit. 
Now, we, what, what is expected of us is to live in obedience towards this promise as children of God. Let us read Hebrews 10, verse 19 to 39. It says, a call to persevere. Now, Hebrews is a, is a book in the Bible that relates so much to faith and the different kinds and characteristics of faith. So let, let's read. And so, dear brothers and sisters, we can boldly enter heaven's most holy place because of the blood of Jesus. By his death, Jesus opened a new and life-giving way through the curtain into the most holy place. And since we have a great high priest who rules over God's house, that's Jesus Christ now, let us go right into the presence of God with sincere hearts, fully trusting him, for our guilty consciences have been sprinkled with Christ's blood to make us clean, and our bodies have been washed with pure water." Let us hold tightly without wavering to the hope we affirm, for God can be trusted to keep his promise. Let us think of ways to motivate one another to acts of love and good works. And let us not le neglect our meeting together, as some people do, but encourage one another, especially now that the day of his return is drawing near. Dear friends, if we deliberately continue sinning after we have received knowledge of the truth, there is no longer any sacrifice that will cover these sins. There is only the terrible expectation of God's judgment and the raging fire that will consume his enemies. For anyone who refused to obey the law of Moses was put to death without mercy on the testimony of two or three witnesses. Just, th just think how much worse the punishment will be for those who have trampled on the Son of God and have treated the blood of the covenant, which made us holy as if it were common and unholy, and have insulted and disdained the Holy Spirit who brings God's mercy to us. For we know the one who said, I will take revenge, I will pay them back. He also said, the Lord will judge his own people. It is a terrible thing to fall into the hands of the living God. Think back on those early days when you first learned about Christ. Remember how you remained faithful, even though it meant terrible suffering. Sometimes you were exposed to public ridicule and were beaten, and sometimes you helped others who were suffering the same things. You suffered along with those who were thrown into jail, and when all you owned was taken from you, you accepted it with joy. You knew there were better things waiting for you that will last forever. The promise. So do not throw away this confident trust in the Lord. Remember the great reward it brings you. Patient endurance is what you need now so that you will continue to do God's will. Then you will receive all that he has promised. For in just a little while, the coming one will come and not delay. And my righteous ones will live by faith. But I will take no pleasure in anyone who turns away. But we are not like those who turn away from God to their own destruction. We are the faithful ones whose souls will be saved. Again, we are the faithful ones whose souls will be saved. So if we talk about promise, if we talk about obedience to get that promise, this is what it talks about. It all starts with faith. But faith and obedience go hand in hand. Faith cannot grow if there is no obedience. Faith needs obedience to God's word to be able to grow. So for God's faith to grow in our lives, we need to do the will of God. And that is what this part also says. We need to be faithful and patient. Patience. We have to endure to receive the promises of God. 
you are willing to wait with faith, we can trust God that His promise will and is given to us. So let us read further on in Hebrew 11 um, about faith heroes. So maybe you have a faith hero in your life. Maybe there's someone in your life that made you want to know Christ. Maybe there was someone in your life or is someone in your life that you can say, if only I can have faith as that person has. The Bible gives us plenty of examples of such faith heroes. And it all starts with obedience. So let's read Hebrews 11, verse 1 to 40. And I'm going to go fast over it. So I want you to, when I read over it, to, to be able to see the obedience, to see the faith of each and every faith hero. So let's read. Great examples of faith. Faith shows the reality of what we hope for. It is the evidence of things we cannot see. Through their faith, the people in days of old earned a good reputation. By faith, we understand that the entire universe was formed at God's command, that what we now see did not come from anything that can be seen. It was by faith that Abel brought a more acceptable offering to God than Cain did. Abel's offering gave evidence that he was a righteous man. Righteousness, obedience. And God showed his approval of his gifts. Although Abel is long dead, he still speaks to us by his example of faith. It was by faith that Enoch was taken up to heaven without dying. He disappeared because God took him. For before he was taken up, he was known as a person who pleased God. Obedience. And it is impossible to please God without faith. Anyone who wants to come to him must believe that God exists and that he rewards those who sincerely seek him. It was by faith that Noah built a large boat to save his family from the flood. He obeyed God, who warned him about things that had never happened before. By his faith, Noah condemned the rest of the world, and he received the righteousness that comes by faith. It was by faith that Abraham obeyed God when God called him to leave home and go to another land that God would give him as his inheritance. He went without knowing where he was going. And even when he reached the land, God promised him he lived there by faith. For he was like a foreigner living in tents. And so did Isaac and Jacob, who inherited the same promise. Abraham was confidently looking forward to a city with eternal foundations, a city designed and built by God. It was by faith that even Sarah was able to have a child, though she was barren and was too old. She believed that God would keep his promise. And so a whole nation came from this one woman or one man who was as good as dead, a nation with so many people that like the stars in the sky and the sand on the seashore, there is no way to count them. All these people died still believing what God had promised them. They did not receive what was promised, but they saw it all from a distance and welcomed it. They agreed that they were foreigners and nomads here on earth. Obviously, people who say such things are looking forward to a country they can call their own. If they had longed for the country they came from, they could have gone back. But they were looking for a better place, a heavenly homeland. That is why God is not ashamed to be called their God, for he has prepared a city for them. It was by faith that Abraham offered Isaac as a sacrifice when God was testing him. Abraham, who had received God's promises, was ready to sacrifice his only son Isaac, even though God had told him, Isaac is the son through whom your descendants will be counted. How's that for obedience? 
Abraham reasoned that if Isaac died, God was able to bring him back to life again. And in a sense, Abraham did receive his son back from the dead. It was by faith that Isaac promised blessings for the future to his sons Jacob and Esau. It was by faith that Jacob, when he was old and dying, blessed each of Joseph's son, sons and bowed in worship as he leaned on his staff. It was by faith that Joseph, when he was about to die, said confidently that the people of Israel would leave Egypt. He even commanded them to take his bones with them when they left. It was by faith that Moses' parents hid him from, the, from three months when he was born. They saw that God had given them an unusual child, and they were not afraid to disobey the king's command. Who are you obeying? The world or God? It was by faith that Moses, when he grew up, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter. He chose to share the oppression of God's people instead of enjoying the fleeting pleasures of sin. He thought it was better to suffer for the sake of Christ than to own the treasures of Egypt, for he was looking ahead to his great reward. It was by faith that Moses left the land of Egypt, not fearing the king's anger. He kept right on going because he kept his eyes on the one who is invisible. It was by faith that Moses commanded the people of Israel to keep the Passover and to sprinkle blood on the doorposts so that the angel of death would not kill their firstborn sons. And what do we celebrate with Passover? Exactly what this refers to, to Christ giving his life, sharing his blood, so that we can be washed pure to receive the promise. Verse 29, it was by faith that the people of Israel went right through the Red Sea as though they were on dry ground. But when the Egyptians tried to follow, they, were all, they all drowned. It was by faith that the people of Israel marched around Jericho for seven days and the walls came crashing down. It was by faith that Rahab, the prostitute, was not destroyed with the people in a city who refused to obey God for she had given a friendly welcome to the spies. <clears throat> How much more do I need to say? It would take too long to recount the stories of the faith of Gideon, Barak, Samson, Jephthah, David, Samuel, and all the prophets. Listen to this. By faith, these people overthrew kingdoms, ruled with justice, and received what God has promised them. They shut the mouths of lions, quenched the flames of fire, and escaped death by the edge of the sword. Their weakness was turned to strength. They became strong in battle and put whole armies to flight. Women received their loved ones back again from death. But others were tortured, refusing to turn from God in order to be set free. They placed their hope in a better life after the resurrection. Some were jeered at, and their backs were cut open with whips. Others were chained in prisons, some died by stoning, some were sword in half, and others were killed with, sword, with the sword. Some went about wearing skins of sheep and goats, destitute and oppressed and mistreated. They were too good for this world, wandering over deserts and mountains, hiding in caves and holes in the ground. All these people earned a good reputation because of their faith. Yet none of them received all that God had promised. For God had something better in mind for us, so that they would not reach perfection without us. Now, we get discouraged so easily. Because of the instantaneous world we live in, we want to see results immediately. So we opt for the worldly things to let it feel better, to make us feel better, so that we can be able to go on in this life. But we forget that there is a life hereafter. The promise that Jesus Christ has given us and the Holy Spirit is the one reminding us of this promise. Do you want to be a faith hero? then you have to be able to wait in obedience. You might even be expected to not even receive the promise in your worldly days. But you can show it 
to the future people, to the next generation. You can proclaim God's promise through His Holy Spirit in the people around you by the way you live, by the way your faith gives you a good reputation. Who of you wants want a good reputation? I think we all do. But we are bombarded by the way we lived or what we've done or what happened in the past to say, oh, no, I don't have a good reputation. People dislike me or people tell me that I'm this or I'm that. But if you're a child of God and you let his Holy Spirit into your life, and you obey his will. He changes that. He changes your being. Because we have a promise. And because we can trust God. Because his trust is faithful. We convince ourselves of doing things because we are impatient. We convince ourselves that this marshmallow on this plate in front of us is what we need for now. And we forget about the whole packet that Jesus Christ is giving us of eternal life. A city built by God himself. Not by fallible people. rather leaving it up to God to direct our path towards the city that he created for us because he's preparing a place for each one of us. But rather leaving it up to him, we take it upon ourselves. Then we give it to him, then we go and take it back. We give our sins away, and then we go, no, no, no. I'm going to take it back because I'm not sure if he's going to handle it. I'm not sure what's he going to th- what he's going to think about the sins that I, that I do. Or I can be ashamed, so I don't want him to see it. God knows everything. We are not under the law anymore. We are not judged by the law anymore. Because Jesus Christ took our sins upon himself as he hung upon that cross. And through that, he gave us a promise that our relationship with God is restored. And as promise and a sign of this, he gave us his Holy Spirit. So we are in the month of May, and we are in a series talking about the Holy Spirit, the Pentecost. So these four Sundays, we're going to be talking about Pentecost and the Holy Spirit, two introductory sermons, and then the last two, we're going to also have time for prayer, as it is part of Pentecost. In the book of James, We learn about faith and endurance, hence waiting in obedience. So I want to read James 1 verse 2 to 27. And again, um, for the sake of time, I'm going to go quickly over it, but please go and read it at home again. It says, faith and endurance, dear brothers and sisters, when troubles of any kind come your way, consider it an opportunity for great joy, for you know what For you know that when your faith is tested, your endurance has a chance to grow. So let it grow. For when your endurance is fully developed, you will be perfect and complete, needing nothing. If you need wisdom, ask our generous God, and he will give it to you. He will not rebuke you for asking. But when you ask him, Be sure that your faith is in God alone. Do not waver for a person with divided loyalty is as unsettled as a wave of of the sea that is blown and tossed by the wind. 
Such people should not expect to receive anything from the Lord. Their loyalty is divided between God and the world, and they are unstable in everything they do. So again, who are you obeying, God or the world? Verse 9, believers who are poor have something to boast about, for God has honored them. And those who are rich should boast that God has humbled them. They will fade away like a little flower in the field. The hot sun rises and the grass withers. The little flower droops and falls and in its beauty fades away. In the same way, the rich will fade away with all of their achievements. God blesses those who patiently endure testing and temptation. Afterward, they will receive the crown of life that God has promised to those who love him. And remember, when you are being tempted, do not say, God is tempting me. God is never tempted to do wrong, and he never tempts anyone else. Temptation comes from your own desires, which entice us and drag us away. These desires give birth to sinful actions, and when sin is allowed to grow, it gives birth to death. So don't be misled, my dear brothers and sisters. Whatever is good and perfect is a gift coming down to us from God our Father, who created all the lights in the heaven. He never changes or casts a shifting shadow. He chose to give birth to us by giving us his true word. And we, out of all creation, became his prized possession. Listening and doing. Understand this, my dear brothers and sisters. You must all be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to get angry. Human anger does not produce the righteousness God desires. So get rid of all the filth and evil in your lives and humbly accept that the word of God has planted in your hearts, for it has the power to save your souls. You remember how Hebrews 10 ends? It has the power to save your souls. Faith, obedience, power to save your souls. But don't just listen, verse 22, but don't just listen to God's word. You must do what it says. Otherwise, you are only fooling yourselves. For if you listen to the word and don't obey it, it is like glancing at your face in a mirror. You see yourself, walk away, and forget what you look like. But if you look carefully into the perfect law that sets you free, and if you do what it says and don't forget what you heard, then God will bless you for doing it. If you claim to be religious but don't control your tongue, you are fooling yourself and your religion is worthless. Pure and genuine religion in the sight of God the Father means caring for orphans and widows in their distress and refusing to let the world corrupt you. So what are the results of faith grown by obedience? It's listening to the will of God. And when you listen to the will of God, Your faith is activated. Your faith is activated because now you are called. You are called as a child of God to go out and serve. Wait on the people. When you wait on the people, when you serve them, you help the orphans. You help the people that's struggling You care for the people as Jesus Christ was the example for us. It's listening to God's will. How do you know what God's will is? You may ask. You will never know if you don't spend time in his word. Scripture is Holy Spirit inspired. That's why you can read a scripture now, and in two weeks' time you can read the same scripture, and the Holy Spirit will have a different message for you. Because it's Holy Spirit inspired. He talks to us through scripture. 
That's where we should listen. But what do we tend to do? Talk, 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 and we forget to listen. Relationship is something shared, and it's the same as prayer. It's something shared between prayer and something which is talking and listening. Talking, listening. When you have a relationship with somebody, that relationship will not grow if you if you only say the same thing every time for three minutes and then you go to sleep. That relationship will not grow. The relationship needs to grow by talking to God, by listening to what he has to say to you, by living in and through his words. And the result is your soul will be saved. So Acts 5, 29, verse 32, it's where Peter and the apostles were captured. They were in jail. And then a miracle happened. So with all the jail bars being locked, the um, people waiting there, um, what do you call them? The jail people? Wardens, there you go, the wardens. Standing there in front knowing nothing, everything is closed, they didn't see anything. And by a miracle, Peter and the apostles were released. They got out of jail and went immediately to go and share the word. They were obedient. And then when the wardens realized, but they're not in their cells, the high priest came. We must stop them immediately before they go and share the gospel to everyone. But he was afraid of what the people were going to say. So the high priest was furious, but Peter replied to him when he got there. And it's Acts 5, verse 29 to 32. But Peter and the apostles replied, We must obey God rather than any human authority. The God of our ancestors raised Jesus from the dead after you killed him by hanging him on a cross. Then God put him in the place of honor at his right hand as prince and savior. He did this so the people of Israel would repent of their sins and be forgiven. We are witnesses of these things. And so is the Holy Spirit who is given by God to those who obey him. So, I close. May you come to know the will of God by spending time in his words, in his word. May you open your ears for his voice so you will be able to hear what the Holy Spirit is telling you. And even though there might be temptations in your life or impatience, tribulations, unrighteousness. May you hold fast unto the promise that God gives us as his children. A promise that far outweighs what the world can give, you, that can give you. May you wait in obedience to the Lord through the Holy Spirit and live out an active life of faith. Let us pray. Our Lord and Heavenly Father, Holy Spirit that resides in us. Lord, we want to experience the joy that you bring. Lord, we want to grow our relationship with you because you are a trustworthy God. Lord, we come today before you to say that we repent of our sins. We repent where we obeyed a worldly law, got impatient or angry. Lord, we want to work in active faith. We want to live out our active faith for the calling you have given us as children of God, to go and be witnesses together with the Holy Spirit, to go out in this world and let people know that there is a promise, a promise that far outweighs what the world can give. So Holy Spirit, I pray that you will now come and bless 
each and every one of us. That by your being residing within us, people will be able to see you. Holy Spirit, remind us each day of the promise so that the, we will not be tempted by our own misjudgments of life, but that we can stand fast in the promise that you bring. Amen. Let us do the closing song, and then I will end off with the benediction.
just reminded me that if there is any of you who do not have a Bible, that you will please come and talk to the leadership, Quinton and everyone on the leadership, and we will see to it that you also receive a Bible. So, receive the blessing of our Lord and Savior. By the love of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, and the grace of our Father, our Heavenly Father, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, also receive the promise of His blessing as you go out and obey His name. Amen. Thank you.